sufficient to us because it's important to remind ourselves that we have a God in heaven. And God cares for us. A God that is important in our lives. Who is God to us? And we have been pursuing God according to what David had known God to be. Because the Bible tells us, and even when he, when he saw backslid, and God decided to change him, and God, God says, I am looking for a man after my own heart to rule the children of Israel. And therefore, David was a man after God's heart. And David, with his interaction with God, interacted with God so much, such that he had come to understand who God is in his life. And that's what we have been pursuing. And we read the song of David in 2 Samuel chapter 22. David was singing to God about who God is to him. And it was so powerful that he says in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 to 7, that the Bible says, And David spoke unto the Lord the words of, his, of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. The hand of Saul was more serious, completely serious. And the Bible says in verse 2, And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my saviour, thou savest me from violence. And this is, I will call upon, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death combust me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell combust me about the, uh, about the snares of death pre prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear me. This house of my cry did enter into his ears. This is a man after God's heart. God himself testified that David is a man after my heart. Let's pray. Father, we pray that as I deliver this message this morning, that your presence is with me. Your presence is going to visit us. Each and every person listening to this message, may they be in this church or online King of Glory. Your presence visit them. May they get revelations and new things that they know. That the Lord will straighten their eyes. The Lord will minister to us in a very special way. We thank you, Father, and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is a man in God's heart who has gone, gone through hell. We have read it here that when the sword the sword Hell me about <laughs> the sorrows of hell. This this man had gone through and he was after. And my wife was preaching this morning for the Rema. Those who miss the Rema word have missed some changing words. That when you go through the wilderness, God is preparing. Make noises and complain because you must learn something when you are going through the wilderness. David, a man after God's heart, went through the wilderness and went through hell and came out alive because the Lord was with him. And that's why I'm saying we are learning on David. He, he thought God was to him. How he felt God was to him. He was singing a beautiful song to God, telling him who you had to meet. 
desire songs to sing unto our God, to tell him who we think God is to us. But do we know who God is to us? Have we interacted with him in a way that we can be with it? Who knows, who knows exactly what God, what God saved him from? From all the enemies, the Amalekites, the Ammonites, the, the Philistines, and all those heights, God saved him from them, saved him from them and more and the one from the end of Saul. The man he was working for. He was his servant. Now, with that said, we, we talk about God being the rock. And we were happy about it. Then we talked about he is my fortress. And we talked about many things about him, the fortress. And before I move to the next, the next one, what David was called to be in his life, I just want to show you what a fortress is. <laughs> what a fortress is. And we talked about the fortress last Sunday. And they said, a fortress is a fortified place. Fortified place. Especially a large military stronghold that often includes a strongly fortified town. So I want to show you some two examples. And I talked about one last Sunday. I talked about the other Sunday. I talked about Fort Jesus. Why do you, do you think it was called Fort Jesus? The word Fort, Fort, it, it's actually a short form of, of fort, Fortified. Fortress. So Fort Jesus, are you seeing that? <laughs> I don't know how clear it is to you. But Fort Jesus, that, that thing, it will need the latest nuclear weapons. To... So when you say, you say it's a fortress, it means that, that hiding under something, some bombs and ropes are not able to shake that wall. Now, do you remember the wall of Jericho? The wall of Jericho was a fortress to fortify the city of Jericho. And that's why God had to do a miracle for them to be able to, to attack Jericho and defeat them. Because they were fortified. They were under a fortress. When you say, God is my fortress, when David says, God is my fortress, I think now you can imagine your head what he was saying. saying. He was saying, I'm hiding under a certain thing. Which canons of those days? This thing was built by Portuguese who came to Mombasa. And they were protecting Mombasa from being attacked by others. So canons, if you go to there, you see canons facing the sea, they were ready to attack the Kami. And also they were ready that no cannon, because those days they would use cannons and things like that, hit that wall and go through. No way. It's a fortress. Praise the Lord. The fortress I want to show you is in Tanzania called Kilwa. Kilwa Island or Kisiwa. Kilwa, that's another fortress. I mean, these things were not a joke. <laughs> they were not a joke. You go there and you shoot with a gun. You are wasting your time. Your gun can never do anything there. You need the latest nuclear weapons to blow that thing. It is heavy. So I just quickly wanted to tell you those fortress, the, how, how the fortress looks like when you talk about God is my fortress. That is what you are meaning. God to the fortress. If you say yes, then you are talking about things like those. And we should not fear anything. The Lord defends us. I just want to I think last time we talked about Apostle Paul 
and Silas being in prison and the Lord had protected them and fortified them. I just want to talk about Apostle Paul again. For sure this man of God was so fortified such that even poisonous snake could not harm him. And you see, to me this qualifies Jesus told us when he was living and gave us a great commission. And he said, even if you take serpents, they will not harm you. Even if you take a poisonous thing, or you take anything that cannot, will not hurt you. And you can see that when Paul was going through a shipwreck, I think some of you know the story of Paul traveling to Rome as a prisoner or as being guarded to go and see the, 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 the Caesar, to go and see Caesar for his case. And then they had a shipwreck. And in the process, when they found themselves in an island, I think it's called Melita or something like that. When they found themselves in that island, it was very cold. It was winter. So they were putting on fire. And Paul was trying to get some wood together. Then a, a serious snake <laughs> came out and got out of his hand. I'm telling you. And you know, they say this guy must be a sinner. You know, people those days, they, they, they were always superstitious. So when they see something funny happening, they will think you are either a mandara or you are a sinner or you are... So people there looked at Paul with a big snake that has come on him. And you know, they, they say this man is going to die instantly because of the venom of the snake. But he threw the snake into the fire. And he, he, he waited for him to die. He never died. They are now, now say, this must be a God. <laughs> this must be a God. So Paul, I, I can tell you today without, without any contradiction that with Jesus, with God in our hearts, we are fortified. Now you can say David was in those days. But Paul is in the New Testament. Hallelujah. David could have been in the Old Testament. But Paul is in the New Testament. And he was touched by the snake and threw it away. And that, the other time I was preaching, I that doesn't mean, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, does not mean you go looking for poison to drink. You are <laughs> Don't go looking. Where is this poison? I am fortified, my friend. Don't try that. Or oh, where is this witch? I'm looking for this witch. Unless you are going to remove demons from the witch. A witch decides to bewitch you and Joshua. They are wasting time because you are fortified. Defied. Hallelujah. I want to speak, speak to people who fear witches. Don't fear these fellows. And we, when you are going to Nyandaru and go home and sleep in your house nicely, even if you find running around, don't begin to say Shindwa and get anointing oil. Kill the frog if you want to kill or throw the frog outside. Pray, make your prayers and sleep. Sleep some and you morning. Hallelujah. Some of you don't like that. Deliverance ministers don't like what I'm saying. But I can tell you, in Jesus you are fortified. In Jesus you are fortified. So don't go being scared because you are under that fortress we have seen there. Because the Lord is our fortress. David discovered the Lord is his fortress. And therefore, we are fortified. I fear nothing myself about witchcraft. They can bring it if they wish. If I die, I can go to heaven. You know, Paul very for me to live is Christ. If I die, it is Christ. If I die, it is <laughs> If you take 
VC like Paul. Life is nice. You never fear these fellows. Hati hawa warogi. Hawa nini? Let them continue doing their work. Continue doing, doing your work, my brother, my sister. Because you are fortified. But I want to sana. I want to move to the next topic now. David also said, David also said, The Lord, the Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is my deliverer. About this for some time. He is my deliverer. A deliverer is a person who saves someone from a painful or a bad experience. That is a deliverer. Moses was a deliverer of the Israelites from Egypt. The Israelites were an, in captivity in Egypt for 430 years, building pyramids <laughs> and doing all what captivity cap cap do, do, or all what slaves do. 400 and how many years? 30 years. How many years have you lived since you were born? 20, 25, 30. We are talking about 130 years. That is serious, being in captivity. So when Moses came and removed them from Egypt, that is called deliverance. You have been delivered from the end of the enemy, from something painful, from something wicked. Jesus Christ, when he came to this world, he came to deliver us from the darkness that we were living in, into the light. That is why we call Jesus a deliverer. In fact, Moses was a messiah. A messiah means in the, as somebody who delivers. And that's why Jesus is also a messiah. Praise the Lord. So a deliverer is somebody who saves us. Some calamity that, that is bad. If you get people out of that, then you are a deliverer. Praise the Lord. Now, a, a deliverer and a savior are nearly the same, or they are actually the same. Because when I deliver you, or I save means I've gotten you out of something. I have saved you from fighting. I've saved you from fire. I've saved you from captivity. I have delivered you from that. So those two words are the same. So a deliverer is a savior. And that is why David in his song calls God my savior. My savior. My deliverer and my savior. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 says, We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Indeed, Jesus was a deliverer to us and is a deliverer today. He's our savior. Deliverer and savior can be used alternately. He is our savior. He was our savior and he remains our savior today. Because the Bible says, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You know what the Bible says? Peculiar. Unique. Are you not happy? You 
are unique, Brother Chepito. You are unique. If I come to where you work, you, you should look unique. But some of us don't differentiate. They are never unique. They are like others. We are, we are the peculiar people because we have been delivered. Deliverance is very important. We have been delivered and therefore we have been made peculiar. We are a chosen generation. And not because of works. Hallelujah. Because and grace is sufficient. By grace, we have been chosen. And we have been made peculiar. Because of the deliverance that Jesus Christ, Christ brought to us. I can tell you when you are, when you are born again, you are a privileged person. Because you are a peculiar person. But if we don't see the peculiarity of you, then you are letting down Christ who delivered you. We are letting down the Lord Jesus who delivered us from darkness into his marvelous light. We should be walking like believers who have been delivered from darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I don't understand whether we are going to heaven, all of us. I think the path is narrow, Pastor Jay. That path is so narrow. It's so narrow. Such that when people, not even, not even, not even the congregation, I mean, are we going to the same heaven? When you hear a brother can never shake hands with another brother in the church, I'm not talking about you. I think you are, you are peculiar. What <laughs> you are peculiar. I'm not talking about you. But I know that brothers must shake hands and they are in the church. But when Joshua sings that song he loves when he comes here, do you know the songs that Joshua loves? You know they are unique, all of them. He will always sing a song when he comes here. And we love it. It's nice. Hey, you see Lucy well, lifting her hands and closing her hands and... Ooh, 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 ooh. But after Lucy does that, cannot increase her joys. No, I'm not saying it. I'm just giving an example. Because there is something in our hearts that does not make us peculiar. You are not a peculiar person. But if you are because the Lord is our deliverer, God is our deliverer, if he is your deliverer, then you should embrace every person who is called a born-again person. Amen. Should we go to shake hands? If we differ with one another, there are ways of the man to keep it until the sun sets. <laughs> Don't keep it. I can imagine if I have differences with you. you listen to this sermon. Be looking at this man who is saying, what is he saying now? And yesterday I saw him in a nightclub. <laughs> what is he doing? Yeah. You know, the, you know some of us, some, some people go to nightclubs. And you, you are seen by others. In the church you are very excited. Hallelujah. Say, but this guy was in a nightclub last night. Some of us are smoking marijuana. I'm sorry to talk about that. That one is, which somebody says is going to be legalized. Some people are smoking. And they're in the house of God. Pastor Jay. Are, are these people peculiar? Hmm? Are they peculiar? Somebody says, if 
lecture smoke mbangi that day and we we peculiar god is calling us from darkness into his marvelous light and a person who is has been called like that is a generation hallelujah we are a chosen generation we are royal priesthood that one is even more serious you are supposed to be a priest wow ask yourself am i a royal priest <laughs> begin thinking about you thinking about yourself are you a royal priest how how is a royal priest supposed to be like am i a royal <clears throat> hallelujah praise the lord psalms chapter 62 Psalms chapter 62 verse 1 to 2 says Truly my soul waiteth upon God from him cometh my from him cometh my salvation The psalmist says Truly my soul waiteth upon God from him cometh my salvation You can see the interaction between the psalmist and god i have not checked whether that psalm is, psalm is psalm of david but i it looks like it's a psalm of david i haven't checked if it is david he had interacted with god to the level that he says my soul is just waiting upon the lord upon from him comes from him comes deliverance every time walking around and you are challenged like david was challenged and bath by sorrows of hell that is what we have read Cause i don't know what sorrows of hell look like <laughs> combat by the i've been reading about david quite a lot eh? that's why i'm talking much about david And even last night I was looking at David <clears throat> when his son Absalom took over the kingdom and he, he ran away and the king ran away from his son He went up to the mountains with his arm and the people that loyal to him like keep us and Joshua chases me from here of course that, that will not happen passage <laughs> god forbid that will not happen passage i'm just giving an example i will look out and will you be on my following me <laughs> so they <laughs> and then there are some people i think they are loyal to me they will so i'm be asking, asking but i thought i thought professor was my loyal <laughs> so at one point david looked around and said where is my pastor ship i i find it hard to pronounce that name my name for ship <laughs> son of and who was i have given him favor I have ever dared him to come and eat in my table. I see. He asked the servant. He said, "No, the guy has remained in Jerusalem." <laughs> and he said, "The Lord has returned the kingdom back to my father." <laughs> the kingdom had been I came out of Saul. And uh, Jonathan was the son of was the son of Saul. and mobisho maybe bashed sorry excuse me for that maybe was a son of Saul was a son of Jonathan so he was a, a grandchild so so the the the, the servant said he has remained in Jerusalem because he is happy 
the kingdom is coming back to is to my, my family. So sometimes when you run away, you think some are going mercy. They may not go after you. They may remain. Anyway, that was not my point. That is just by the way, the way. But on, on the way, David went away crying. Can you imagine a king? The, the mighty man of war, the man who defeated Goliath, is running away from his son. He removed shoes. He went without shoes. Without shoes. It's a very interesting story. Read it on your own time. He goes without shoes and he is wailing and crying. And because the king is crying, everybody following him will cry. <laughs> the Uko people who are crying. Ooh, 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 and they are led by King David. Now I'm trying to show you. When David said, I was compassed by sorrows, that could have been one of them. And you see, you see, when when this boy remained there with some undivided. with them publicly so they took all the I think they were two of conniction wherever they were and they, they lied with this boy and you know things that you can't imagine. him again send people to pursue King David and kill him so this man when he says I was combusted by, by sorrows of hell. These are the things that David was going through, and he was king, anointed by God. So sometimes I look at us, when we go through some little mishap, we begin to cry. My friend, go back to God. I tell him, my soul is waiting for you, for deliverance, for salvation. I'm looking up to you. It's still there. Look at that. Truly, my soul waited upon God. From him cometh salvation. I'm teaching you, church, that when you get into those conditions, difficult conditions, you are sick and the doctor has said you have cancer, go back to God and say, my soul waited upon God. From where the salvation comes? Not from people. Not from your past. Your pastor will pray for you, no problem. Salvation does not come from the pastor. It comes from God. But do you know him? Who is God to you? Is he your deliverer? That is the main question. Is God our deliverer? If God is our deli deliverer, if God is our salvation, then even if we go through those situations, we will be searching unto God who saves us. As pastors, we go through a lot of They are here. The pastors are here. Every small thing that happens, people are, are just saying, I did not see the pastor. He did not come. I'm not trying to excuse myself that I shouldn't come, but we have a weakness as followers. As followers of our, of our ministries, we have weaknesses. He's pastor your God. Pastor God. Pastor come to comfort you. Thank God. If pastor doesn't come to comfort you, don't say, why did pastor refuse to come? Maybe he had other issues also. Do you know pastors fall sick? How many of you know that pastors also fall sick? You could if pastor has not come, and the pastor is so is. God for his salvation. <laughs> so let's wait upon God. Because we know who God is to us. He is a believer. So whether your business is going down, call unto God, he's your deliverer. Whether your child is sick, call upon God, he's your deliverer. There are times when you like falling sick at night, and maybe you don't even have a car, you don't have money to call for Uber. Call upon God. He's your deliverer. 
And I have done it myself. Actually, I have done that. I have done that. <laughs> so I'm speaking from experience, Pastor Joshua. I'm not just preaching theory. When my daughter Sheila was small, she fell sick at night. And she started crying. We were in some corner near Shugu Kawangwe, opposite Shugu It was dark, we did the car. We bus and the taxis that were there were the old ones. How many of you remember taxis we used to be there? They were looking terrible. And they were not there in Kawangware. They were all in town, city. And I didn't know what to do. Secondly, I didn't have money. I didn't have money. I was working for government. I didn't have a card which I can flash in the hospital. Treatment. I nothing. My wife had a, 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 a cover from our division then. They were not even using cards. They were saying, Where is that money to spend? We didn't have that money to spend. I prayed. I, there was no other way now of survival other than the prayer. I carrying the baby. I don't even have money to take her to the hospital. So I can't go out waiting. This is a factual story, by the way. It's a real thing. I prayed. I prayed. I prayed like Mwamba. <coughs> Remember, you remember in Angakan Hospital, walking around in that hospital. <laughs> when our wives are delivering, we think they are going to die. Aye. After my wife delivered, deliver again. Because I saw death. I just saw death. <laughs> I don't want you to go through this thing again. <laughs> so I prayed and prayed and Sheila slept. I don't know how, but she slept. Until morning. So when I woke up in the morning, the first thing was to go and borrow money from a friend. How many of you remember my message in 2012? Is it 2012 or 2013? I hate poverty. How many of you remember that message? I hate poverty. Poverty is very, very demeaning and degrading. It makes you kneel down and beg. Tafadhali, hata ikiwa ni 10 shillings, ni pati. Ni tatafuta hiyo ingine ni ongeze. I mean, it takes you down there and you become like you are nobody. So I went to my friend. And he, he lent me money. I took my daughter to the hospital. She had temperature. I don't know what. And she recovered. But the Lord saved us throughout the night. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then another incident happened. My wife had a problem with gum. I think the tooth or something. You remember that? She, she was so much attacked at night. The devil likes, likes attacking us at night. I have no idea why. Enjoy you should tell me because you are an intercessor. Why the devil is always attacking people at night? She started feeling pain. And it was so much. She started weeping. I said, where what was this woman? I don't have my money. I think being moneyless is bad. I hate poverty. Don't be moneyless. Pray to God. That he rescues you from being moneyless. Because I went through man manlessness. And she was crying, and we were just two of us and a house girl somewhere in the sitting room. We had, I mean, it was just one bed seat, and what are they called? <laughs> Those rooms. <laughs> <laughs> you, have a, you have a bedroom and a sitting room. And like a kitchen there and like a toilet. So the, girl, the house girl sleeps in the sitting room on the sofa set. So we were just three of us. I went to prayer. You know, some, I think some text takes us through the wilderness. I remember that message. 
It was a wilderness experience. And I prayed and prayed and she stopped feeling pain as she slept. <laughs> In the morning, we woke up to go and, go and borrow. This borrowing thing is a very bad thing. <laughs> if you thought you have borrowed too much, pass and borrowed also. We went and uh, she went to the hospital and I found there was nothing. So I don't know what was those demons who come to torture us. So I think prayer works very well. You pray them out. You push them out. And that's why this is a very important scripture. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Hallelujah. That's very important. The Lord is our deliverer. The Lord is our deliverer. Now, God delivered David and Israel from the hand of Goliath, the Philistine. I think you know the story. I mean, it was such a story where you, you, you find your own time and read Samuel chapter 17. Goliath, the read, second, first Samuel chapter 17. Goliath threatened the children of Israel and you they ran to hide in their tents. He came out. He shouted. I think this guy, guy must have been part of the children, the, the, the children of Anna, Anak. Giant. He stood and shouted. And all the, children, the armies of Israel ran and hid in their tents. Small boy called him. And listen to this man talking. And he said, who is this guy who is, uh, who is defying the armies of Israel? Who is he? I can, I can deal with him. <laughs> I mean, a small boy who has just come from looking at sheep. And he's taking some cheese to his brothers who are fighting. And I can tell you, it was God that rescued David from this man. Nobody else could face that man. Even the king himself, so, was hiding in the tent. So when David was taken to so, to tell so, I can beat that man. So just looked at him and said, what is this? He tried to cloth the armor, the cloth for war. <laughs> Those, what are they called? The armor. A Levi's on go, a he can't carry them the way it is. I went for training one time and I was given a, a bullet vest, a bullet proof thing. As bullet proof, anyway, I don't want to know military people who are, but I wore that thing. Eh? You need, you need strength. You need to eat ugali, not rice. To walk around with that thing. You need to eat properly, good meal. To walk with that thing. And it's just thing here. So David was putting the whole thing like this. Eh, to go and face Goliath. He couldn't walk. He said, I don't want this. He went, you know, the way, the way I am. To face a guy who has... Who has a, a hammer bear? Somebody carrying the ship. Somebody, several people. And him carrying. And he has his own helmets and his armor. It was just God who saved this young man. Even that stone that he threw. That was just God. There was nothing like, I am powerful. Sindio, we cannot agree that. How does stone kill such a man? Leave, get a stone there and hit me here. Maybe unless it goes straight to the head. I think it must have gone down. And he was having his helmet. How did the stone even go direct to hit the head? It was just God who saved David from that man. He would have been killed there. And then after killing this man, 
He saved the whole Israel. Hallelujah. So David knew when he was singing who God was to him. He was not a joke. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 22 to 24, the Bible says, Had David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren and talked with them, behold, they are chapter of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistine and spoke according to the same words and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. They fled. So there was no fight. No army flies. But David, for him to say, the Lord is my deliverer, raised that man and God delivered him. Praise the Lord. At one point, King because of jealousy, I told you, told you this before, wanted to kill David with a spear, spear while he was playing music for him to chase away an evil spirit. You know when his soul was rejected by God, an evil spirit from God came and ended so. And the to treat that spirit was music from David. <laughs> music is it used to soothe it. And you, the spirit, the spirit goes away. I'm looking for that time when the worship team will be singing as demons begin. The evil spirits begin to flee because, mu because music is powerful. And that's why I'm saying on 14th, let's believe God that this effect it will be good. The music will come out well. The Lord will deliver us from evil, some of us who are carrying burdens and the challenges, that worship alone will deliver us. Hallelujah. It will deliver us. So, while David was playing that harp thing, the man took a spear and he threw unto David to kill him. I have come to treat you from sickness and you still want to kill me. What kind of a man was Saul? If you go to a doctor and he is treating you, can you kill him? If you kill him, you die also because he's treating you from something. The guy was, was he was, and he did that not twice. He wanted to pin the wall with a spear, spear. David escaped. And David says, God is my deliverer. He knew where he came from. Now, has God helped you from a situation? That you can testify by God. Think about that. Has God delivered you from us to a testimony? By the way, I love the salvation of the 70s when I got saved. Those days were testimonies, and people are not saying anything about it. Today, if I stand here and tell you that God has blessed me with a new Prado. Those days it was a miracle. The Lord has blessed you with a new house. Oh, we celebrate together. The Lord has blessed you with a new hope. It will be It is a testimony. Today, has God done something that you can stand and say, my Lord, my deliverer. Hallelujah. There is a bus that plunged into a river in Machakos. This was many years ago. And it killed almost everybody. But when they were looking inside, they found a small kid who survived. That kid has a testimony, isn't it? That kid can say, the Lord is my deliverer. Hallelujah. I'm sure you know what I mean now. The Lord is our deliverer. I want us to love God because we know who he is to us. 
Don't love God because you know what he was to you. Love God because you know what he is to you. Can somebody say amen? amen? Love God because you know who he is to you. Not because he did that to David. He did that to Saul. He did that to Paul. He did that to Peter. But what has he done to you? Have you had an experience with God? To a point that you can say, the Lord is my deliverer. I think in the month of March, I went through surgery. And I discovered you need God everywhere. Hallelujah. Guys, and I don't know when I'm blacked out. I am not sure when, when I, I disappeared. If they wanted to carry away my kidneys, they would have taken <laughs> <laughs> they would have done what they want because you are just them and you just and you just find you don't know when you went. So when I woke up, <laughs> God is good, amen. The Lord is my deliverer. When I woke up, I said, Give me water. I couldn't even speak. <laughs> Isn't God not a deliverer? Our God is a deliverer. If those guys wanted to sacrifice me to some demons, <laughs> they would have done it. They wanted to sell my, my kidneys, they would have sold one of them. By the way, you know you can operate. They could do it. Of course, it's not, it's not, no, it's not, uh, not uh, medical. It's trying to, to tell you that things can happen in your life. Hey, people can take away your and your things. You wake up and you have no eyes. They have taken them. <laughs> so the Lord is our deliverer. Hallelujah. The Lord is our deliverer. I thank God for whom God is. He's so powerful. Such a nice God. So, when Saul died, when King Saul died, the sons of Saul continued fighting with David. I think I've taught you this quite a few times. David was an old king, but he became king and you after many years. And you saw and died. And after he died, actually the reason why when we read the first part says, when God delivered David from all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, is because the moment David was ordained, was, was, was uh, anointed to be king, Fighting began. So wanted to kill him. And the so also realized that the spirit of God has gone. He has been left bare. So he started fighting David. Running after him from every corner. Looking for him from mountains. Going through caves. I think you have read the story. Where they, they found themselves in one cave. And David told him, I would have killed you, but you are, you are an anointed man by God. <laughs> Who did I kill? David spared the man. But this man can't wait. He is ready to kill him many times. So the story is long. But at the end of the day, when he died finally, he died together with his, with his son Jonathan, then the tribe of Judah, because... Because... Uh, I don't want to take away your time. Because David was from the house of Judah. Jesse, the father, was from the house of Judah. So David was from the house of Judah. So immediately the house of Judah came and the crowd anointed him to be king. They accepted David to be king. But all other tribes have not yet accepted him. And let me tell you, and I might, and I might correct this point, I may have told you, Okay, yeah, I may have told you that Judah includes uh, two tribes, which is true later on, when the kingdom splits, when the kingdom of Israel split, Judah and the tribe of Benjamin remained one side and the other ten on the other side. But this time, the kingdom have, has not split. The tribes are all together and they are Israel. But David coming from Judah, the tribe of Judah came quickly, 
and uh, made him the king. But now Saul was what? Do you know who saw which, which house he came from? From the house of Benjamin. Thank you. Thank you, Bible readers. Saul was from the house of Benjamin. So the house of Benjamin could not join Judah in this. And the, and the Bible says, and the house of Saul continued fighting with the house of David. And David ruled, you will read later in the book, in 1 Samuel. And then David ruled the house of Judah as king for seven years and a half. For seven years and a half. While the other tribes... <laughs> So he fought and fought and fought until he beat all of them and they all accepted. Now you can be our king. Those days you must beat people until they submit. Then Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 3 and says 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 says Now there was a long war between the house of and the house of David. But David works stronger and stronger, and the house of weaker and weaker. And I say, finally, David and became king of Israel. Hallelujah. Now, if he ruled Judah for seven and a half years, and, and, and so rude, so, so rude when David was anointed as king for several years. I haven't checked those years. Now, it is David to be king. When God said you are, you are going to be king, it never happened immediately. And it's good to tell believers of today, when, when we prophesy to you, or when a prophecy comes, it doesn't mean now, now, now. It means now. But it may also not, also not mean it now. So when a prophet comes, and see, just, just continue believing God and waiting. In the battles. Continue humbling yourself before your boss. boss. Continue. <laughs> because David humbled himself before Saul. Even when Saul wanted to kill him, David continued humbling himself before Saul. Even when his son died, David wept. Even when he died, died, David wept. That is the man of God we are talking about. He has seen issues and life was not easy. I want to, to finalize by saying, by saying that um, by calling us out of the darkness into the light which I am. He has saved us by sending Jesus Christ to come to the world to receive and all of, us, all of us know John chapter 3 verse 16. I will not read that one. And Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love to us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I love that one. While I was still in sin, Christ died for me. Not that I did not know what was happening, but he knew he loved me even when, even when I did. And he died for me. God, God for me. He is my deliverer. And he is my. Imagine that God loved us so much so that even when we don't know, God still loves us. Even when we are, we are calling him names, he still loves us. Even when we do what? God still loves us. To a point of sending Jesus Christ to die for us. What kind of manner of love? I think you know that song. What manner of love is this? That this man sent, sent Jesus for us. Indeed, he is, he is Farara and Savior, and we need him all the time. Do you love Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you don't, this is the day for you. Because without him, you have no deliverer. You are exposed to this 
happen brother you are exposed you will be attacked the fortress will be removed from and you will be exposed so it is important if you are not born again to be born again and if you are born again to search yourself and know you are truly born again nowadays people have stopped saying they are born again because those who are born again have been seen doing things and therefore people are scared of saying i'm born again i think i told you a story of when i was doing my driving license and uh, we were moving around with this driver helping me he told me to give him money so that he can uh, i can pass my driving test exam i told him i'm a pastor i'm born again those those days i was an elder but i was a preacher also so i told him i'm a pastor i'm born again he laughed and said how many pastors have we seen <laughs> they have given us money so some Sometimes even you don't even want to say you are born again. The action themselves should talk. The penalty of your salvation should speak. Hallelujah. Does your peculiarity speak? Are you a special believer? Who, believer, who people look at and say, I see God in heaven. I see that. I see that. Then you can say, deliverer, God is my salvation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much today. We are so grateful that you love us so much. Something I have come to you. Then you say, when we were yet sinners, you died for us. When I was yet a sinner, not knowing where I was, you still died for me. Father, I love you today. I love you so much. Because you loved me before I loved you. I'm so grateful. Your salvation is important to me. Because you save me when I'm in calamity. You save me when things are bad. You save me when things are going off. You are always there for me. For me, Father. I call upon you. Come and visit me. Come. If there is anything that does not reflect your salvation in my life. Lord, have mercy upon me. Forgive me for any trespasses, anything that I've done that is not in line with salvation. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me the right way. Lord Jesus, that to my heart. Behold, your people are seated here. Touch them. Remind them of their life. Remind them of their hearts' desires. Remind them of the things they have done. Good things and those that are contrary to salvation. Help them to repent. Help them to come back to you with repentance. Let's just lift one hand before God and say, Father, I repent. I repent. I want you to talk loudly if you are serious about this. We want to repent before God. Father, I repent before you. I may have done things that are contrary to your salvation. I may have done things that are sinful. Some I know, some I don't know. Forgive me. Make me a new creation. Make me a peculiar person. Let my life be different from others who are not born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for accepting in your kingdom. I thank you, Father. I bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If there is somebody who says, Pastor, pray for me, I want to be born again this morning or this afternoon. Are you here and you are not born again? We want to help you. We want to help you so that you can be part of us and you can go to us. We don't want to leave anywhere to go together to heaven. Are you here this afternoon? May I see your hand? Lift your hand very high. 
the Lord sees your heart. We will pray for you. Are you there? Somebody want to be born again today? Hallelujah. We thank you if you are all born again. And if you have any other need that you may want, my elders and my pastors will be here before they leave. We can pray for you. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Be with us. Be with us, Lord, even as we go home. Take care of us and protect us. We bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you so much. Pastor Joshua, please come.
get us to know something that God would want us to get direction about in Jesus' name. Thank God that you came. So tell your neighbor, thank you very much for coming. You did well to come. You're allowed to speak. Tell them you did well to come in the house of God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the love of the Holy Spirit, be with us now. And mercy shall, shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. May you have a blessed week in Jesus' name. And we